So, what I have here today is a bunch of fig starts. I got these cuttings. I went on eBay and I bought cuttings and I started these based on a uh, video that I watched that explained how to do this in bark, uh, shredded bark and on top of a heating pad. So these have been in here. Started on January 22nd and it is now uh, May 15th and they have been growing and rooting in here this whole time. So I'm going to be taking some of these out of here and potting them up in larger pots. We'll see how many I get done at this point. But you can see some of these are really, really growing. Some not quite so much. Um, there's not a lot of growth on some of them. We'll, we'll do some of the bigger ones and, and get them going. And they're going into these uh, two gallon ostensibly uh, sized pots which should be good for at least another year the idea with the fig cuttings here is that I will get them into the pots and they will grow for a year in the pots and then they will be able to be transplanted out. I have several places I want to put them on my property. I have a friend who wants to plant some and I will probably sell some because honestly even between the two of us I don't think that we need 24 fig trees especially since I already have a couple. So with that kind of said let's see what we can do. These are the uh, pots. I've got a, a very light potting soil in here. Um, the idea with the figs, you want pretty light soil I guess so they will uh, grow a lot of root very quickly. So that's the plan. So here's the first fig. Um, this one is an Olympian and you can see it's got a lot of good growth there but you can also see down here in this cup you can see uh, very good root growth. This is what I've, I've gotten on these with the, uh, the heating pad is they really started sending out roots very very quickly very well and so with the clear plastic cup I can look and, and check on them. I can take them out and see how they were doing. So we'll just start with this guy. We will pop him out. The tag is of course going to uh, continue to be here's there. Make a hole in here and set that down in I'm not filling these really really full um, I don't I don't need to fill the pots really full I don't feel like I want to use that much potting soil the other thing and uh, get them going. I think that's just, you get little figs trying to grow on <laughs> some of these. So there's the first one. Second one, another Olympian. Not quite as heavy a root growth, but still quite a bit of root growth. Uh, very good sprouting on top.
Now, it might be interesting to just point out here that one of the things that I've done is when I started this, my heating pad is only about this big in here. It doesn't reach to the ends. And so several of these that were on the outside edge did not root very quickly in the cold. And so I've, I've moved them around over the, the time that I've been working this. <laughs> Next one is uh, Violet de Bordeaux, and you know this is very different looking. Uh, the leaf is different, it's, it's pointier, it doesn't have quite as much of a rounded end. If we, we look at these, you can see some differences between them, very definitely, between the Olympian and the Violet de Bordeaux. Supposedly these are difficult to root. I don't think I had much trouble with them. They, uh, they seem to have come on pretty well here. And if I look, there's some real good root growth. And in this case, that root has grown down to the bottom, hit the bottom, it grew back up. And you see right here, there's some shoots coming out. So. <laughs> Here's a Violet de Bordeaux, and this, this particular cutting, um, the, it's kind of the end of the branch, it wasn't out of the middle. If you look at some of these, you look at this one here, and you can see that it's a, a cut in the middle of the branch. This being the end of the branch, it's got the terminal bud there, and it's coming from that very nicely. Um, all of these Violet de Bordeaux came in from the same place, and they were, were a, a group of like six or eight chunks of, of branch. Uh, so they all basically got the tree the same way. One thing on these, you see how close together the nodes are is that this one had more nodes in the ground, perhaps, than the uh, bigger ones that came out of the middle of the branch. As the branches grew and got older, those nodes are farther apart. And so this has got them close together, so there were maybe more nodes in the ground. You notice the roots on this one are really something. It's growing very, very well there. <laughs> this one is quite possibly my favorite start here. First of all, that's a big fat chunk of branch and I didn't think it was going to do anything. It's all older wood um, but man it, it rooted like crazy and when I say it rooted like crazy I've got a problem here because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it out without just cutting off that but you look at all the roots that are growing in that one so let's see what we can do here to get this out. I'll just start easing 
get out of there. Very well. Take some of that potting soil back out of there. That's going to go in here. And then I'll put that soil back in around it. And you can see on this one, there's a couple of figs growing as these things go a little bit further along. I probably should pull all those off because the figs that are growing there aren't going to ripen and they're just taken away from the, the actual rooting and, and branch growth. So we'll just pull those off. And that's a black mission fig. And he's looking pretty good. I like the growth on that one. Now this is the the first of my Desert King cuttings. And I think I only have three out of the 24 here that are, are from the Desert King. Desert King is what I have growing down in my... Uh, my yard and I took these cuttings because after I did all the other cuttings I had three cups left in my bin and I thought well I'll just go whack a couple of branches off <laughs> Desert King and stick them in. Um, there, there's a lot of interesting uh, background on me and the Desert King figs and trying to get things started but uh, this one rooted up very nicely. Black Mission, again, coming from older wood. And uh, the, those older woods sometimes I, I think is not as, as vigorous. Um, I, I'm no expert on this. I'm just figuring this out as I go along. But here's something that I have noticed on some of these. And you can see right in here that coming up from below ground, from a node below ground, we've got some leaves coming there. And so it uh, be interesting to see what this thing does once it's in the pot, once it starts getting some actual uh, nutrients in the soil. See, here's a root that came right up to the surface. Um, once you start having some nutrients in the soil, if that's going to be a new shoot that comes up from the bottom or what, if they are shoots that come up, some of those suckers alongside are going to be okay, depending on what the rest of it is doing. Some of those I will be pruning off uh, as they start to grow, because honestly, I like to see figs with a single uh, main trunk up for a little ways and then they can be branched out. It just makes them easier to work with. Even though my, my big desert king down there has three main trunks, um, I prefer to get a single trunk coming up. But we'll see what happens when that has, goes a while with that, that shoot down there comes up. So this next one is, this is a weird one. This is a black mission, and if you look at it and study it for a minute, you might notice something. Now, one thing you're going to notice if you look right here, we have um, we have roots and a shoot, a green shoot coming out there. But if you look here and you look at this what you'll notice is that's growing this way and it's going to curve up. Some idiot when he was setting these things in put this one in upside down. 
this is the bottom, that's the top. But it's still rooted, so I guess I can't complain too much. And since I'm the guy who did it, I'm just impressed that it's actually growing. Yeah, see there, you, you can see right there this coming out on the side that is, uh, looks like it's sending up a sucker there. So we will be seeing how this thing does over the, um, over the next few months and what it, what it grows into. I'm very curious how well it's going to manage with that uh, upside down whether it's going to uh, uh, just kind of curve up or what's going to happen or if I'm going to have to rely on that that sucker that's coming up on the side if that comes up on the side and it's growing straight up and this thing's doing something really weird I don't know we'll see so this is the last one I'm doing for right now this is another Olympian and it's growing very nicely with a lot of roots. So. This guy's got shoots coming out all the way up and down that stem. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about some of that, but get her in there and see what happens in the days to come. So there's 12 of my 24. I will get the rest of them sorted out in another batch. This right here is my Desert King. This is one I bought and uh, put it in here four years ago, I think. And it is doing very well. And you can see lots of figs on it for this year. And I whacked a few chunks off of it to, um, to use it for those starts. This needs some major pruning in order to get it to be a well-shaped tree. And I'm not sure I know how to do that, but I'm gonna start hacking away at it here next year. This year I wanted to maximize the number of figs that I got for some reasons. And, uh, but you can see it's got three main trunks that come up down here. And that's just awkward. And there's going to have to be branches cut off to uh, to make it flow, and and I'll try to get something that looks decent on that. This here, this is a desert king that we had rented a place and. It had a desert king fig. This is where my fig obsession got started. And here's the long rambly fig story. And when we were getting ready to move out of there in October, um, we bought a place or were trying to buy a place and I wanted to get some cutting from it. And somebody said, just cut off branches and stick them in, in a, a mix of potting soil and sand. And so I cut off about Oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 just took tops and things and cut them off. And I shoved them into pots and, and set them out behind the house. 
Well, that sail fell through, so these things sat there in those pots all winter. And in the spring, uh, I noticed that they were, a couple of them, like four or five of them, were sending out uh, leaves. And they had rooted. I didn't do anything particular. I just shoved them into the pots. I stuck them out back, and they, they took off. So then with one thing and another, we bought this place in April, and with one thing and another, we moved here, and they didn't get planted right away. And <clears throat> several of them died in the pots. They just got dried out and stuff. And I put four of them in that, that were doing well. And they all looked really good through the summer, and I was really excited. And then we got a very early frost, and it killed them back. And <clears throat> that was when that next spring, because all of these had evidently died, I went and I bought that one. And so, with a thinking that they were all dead, I planted that one, and then the same day that I planted and was getting that one set in there, I noticed a shoot coming up here. And so I kind of tenderly cared for that shoot, and you can see it grew up. So this Desert King fig here is actually a start from the Desert King that was at the place that we were renting, which is what kind of got me started on this whole fig journey, because I love figs. But we also can see something here that, that's worth noting. Here in the, the Willamette Valley, it's, it's not a, you don't get hard freezes, really. But you can see there's enough cold that we get frost damage, and a lot of the time the terminal buds get killed out on these. And there's a, a frost damage on the ends of a lot of branches on the, uh, the figs. And, and one of the things that I discovered is, and learned from, from other research is that a lot of the time, even if they get frozen clear down to the ground, they're likely to come back up from the root. Well, that's yet another part of the fig story is this guy. And this guy I bought last summer, and he didn't look great when I got him. And I'm waiting to see if anything comes up. He froze out over winter, and I'm waiting to see if anything comes up. But the top part has all, has all died. And so if anything comes up from that, I'll be very happy. That's a, a Vern's Brown Turkey, which is a variety that I want to be able to grow. If it doesn't, I'll have to see if I can find some place to get some cuttings and try again. But uh, we're hoping something comes up from the roots there. So there's my fig journey. And hopefully there's going to be some more figs and more fig trees in my future. All right, it's been a couple of days since I uh, started on the uh, potting of the figs. And at this point, I've got all of them potted up. And just a quick walk down the row here to take a look at them. Just kind of seeing what all we've got. These are all Olympians here, these first 10. Honestly, they look pretty good to me. Now the Black Mission, we talked about these before, is that these are actually, well, they're, they're not showing a lot as far as leaves here. And this one especially, it just barely got enough. There, there were quite a few roots on these. So they weren't looking too bad. This black mission, pretty good uh, leaf bud out of it. And these, these three black mission here seem to have a, a real good growth. I, like I mentioned before, this one with the big 
uh, trunk is, is pretty impressive. So there's the black commissions. And then these last ones are the Violet de Bordeaux. And the, this first one here, I don't know how well you can see. It's the, the bud is, it's not gonna focus, that's okay. The bud is at the top, that's a terminal bud, and it's not looking good. There is a bit of growth coming up the bottom. It doesn't look great either, so I'm doubting that that one's gonna make it. Otherwise, that one, I mean, these Violet de Bordeaux look pretty good. This one here, again, it's not bad. It's a little limp. It hasn't, uh, it's like it took some transplant shock. Now, this is a Desert King. These three are Desert Kings here. So this Desert King, this Desert King, I say this one looks like it's got some transplant shock. The others look pretty good. So that's the, that's the rundown on the 24 figs. There's one there that I'm a little concerned is not going to make it. Um, if that doesn't, like I said, that's a Violet de Bordeaux. I've got one, two, three, four others that look really, really strong. So we, we'll see. If that one doesn't make it, we'll survive. And that one black mission is pretty minimal, but it had good roots. Otherwise, everything looks good. And then there's this guy up here. Um, this one is the, uh, the Desert King that I started last summer. I just, just jammed a stick into a, a pot and I stuck three or four in there, this one rooted. I did that with two other sticks here and they're not doing anything. I'll pull them out and throw them away. I got plenty of, uh, of figs started for this year. So that's the fig project. I will put a link down below in the description to the video where I got the uh, information about starting the cuttings that way. And thought you all might find this a little bit interesting. I'm having fun with this. Y'all have a good day.